Welcome to News Click. It's 35 years since the Bhopal gas tragedy. We have with us Mr. Indy Jay Prakash. We're going to discuss what has happened to the case, the victims, the compensation they were supposed to get. In fact, the Indian government is not even, the Indian public is not sure how many people were actually seriously injured, how many died in that tragedy. Uh, Mr. Jay Prakash is with the BGP Triple S and with the Delhi Science Forum. Uh, welcome to News Click, sir. Um, please tell us what has happened in the case since the last time we spoke in 2014. What is the Supreme Court doing right now? What is the status of the victims? What kind of compensation did they get? Yeah, before we begin, uh, I would like to pay homage to Abdul Jabbar Khan. Uh, we've been fighting the, I mean, he's been fighting the <coughs> case for the victim for the last 35 years. And we've been together <coughs> in, uh, for the, I mean, I've been working with him for the last 30 years. And unfortunately on 14th November, this year he passed away under tragic circumstances because uh, he was a victim, gas victim, and because he could not get proper medical treatment, uh, he actually passed away in a private hospital. Right, and he's because been... because the uh, gas relief hospitals could not did not have the uh, means to treat him. You know that that's the state of uh, healthcare. You know? And 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 he and he's been fighting for the victims for the last thirty five years. And he learned the process of the law himself yeah. over this period in order to help. I mean, yeah, he, he was actively campaigning for the cause of the Bhopal gas victims. Yeah. Uh, coming back to your point, see, the settlement took place on fourteen fifteenth uh, February nineteen eighty nine. At that time, the base of the settlement was that. Only one lakh five thousand gas victims there, including three thousand dead. That was the base of the settlement of four seventy million, which was then about seven hundred five crores. But subsequently, after adjudicating all the claims, which was about uh, 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 one million claims, you know, by by the time they started processing the claims, you know, which took about twelve years. And in two thousand four, the government the Union of India had to admit before the Supreme Court that the magnitude of the disaster was actually five times greater. Because after adjudicating all the claims, uh, the government said that the total number of victims were actually 5,73,000. Right. How did it come to be that you grossly underestimated the victims? Because How did that this happen? Uh, figure of 1,5,000 was totally a fictitious figure because they had no basis to come come around because they had not assessed the, at that time there were 6 lakh claims mm -hmm. see? and only a portion of that claims were, had been adjudicated. So they had no means of quantifying this figure of 1 lakh 5,000, this is totally a fictitious figure. Mm -hmm. And so subsequently, uh, <clears throat> because even when, uh, even while assessing the, uh, going through the revision petition which we had filed. Uh, the courts r refused to admit it. I mean, uh, 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 said that we have not been able to successfully, uh, successful in telling the court that the magnitude is actually far great. But the court also said that if we can prove that the number of victims are actually greater, that they would be willing to reopen the case. That was the assurance which the courts gave us on fifth, uh, fourth May, nineteen eighty nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on that basis, we filed a, a petition again in 2004 before the Supreme Court. But again, the Supreme Court just rejected that uh, our application. Uh, but we, we were given the option of going back, bef going before the Welfare Commission of Bhopal mm -hmm. uh, to take up this case. But uh, the Welfare Commission also rejected our petition and then the petition again went back to the we filed an appeal in the High Court. The High Court rejected it. Then we came back to the Supreme Court in 2010 and filed by filing a special leave petition, which the court admitted. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, that case has been pending before the court for the last nine years. It's nine years since? In nine years, because okay. uh, soon after we filed our special leave petition, mm -hmm. the government of India also filed a curative petition opposing the settlement and claiming an amount of 7,700 crores, which is practically 10 times more 
Than the settlement. Uh, uh, than the settlement. And so what was the, the ground on which the... Because the, the government of India finally admitted, because the magnitude of the disaster was actually five times greater than mm -hmm. at the time of the settlement. So, so uh, one of the biggest questions then arises that who is going to pay for all the costs that arise out of this tragedy? Oh no, even the government of India said that the cost, the compensation to be paid by Dow Chemicals, which is the current owners of Union Carbide Corporation. So that, that, that that's just a uh, status. Uh, but we, our position is that the government of India must pay off this money now and recover it from Dow Chemicals. Do you think that is going to happen in the it near future? It can happen, but the, uh, the fact is that the matter has not been taken up by the Supreme Court because it has to be dealt by a constitution bench okay. and the bench has not been constituted so far. Is there a plea pending that they should be yeah, we have, because Yeah, so because even Justice Gagoi uh, in January 2019 mm -hmm. said he would take up the case in April 9, 2019, mm -hmm. but that never happened. What exactly then is the status of the victims, those who sought health uh, treatment and those who sought compensation? Uh, how much did they actually end up getting? Uh, see, uh, parallelly, when we had, we had filed a petition in 1998, uh, seeking better health facilities for gas victims. You know. And that petition was, uh, um, uh, we, the court gave us a favorable ruling after 14 years, in 2012, you know, said that uh, there should be proper medical care for gas victims, etc. And the court directed the High Court to ensure the execution of the order passed on mm -hmm. uh, 8th, uh, 9th August uh, 2012. Unfortunately, that matter is also pending for the High Court. And Jabbar was one of the petitioners in that case, you know, and, and, and uh, <laughs> himself is not there t today. Now, there always is the question that <clears throat> the government is supposed to issue a certain kind of identity and proof of the kind of treatment that the victims are getting. Why is that necessary? No, see, this has been one of our demands that, you know, that the uh, health condition should be properly monitored. So that we've said that all the health records should be computerized and each gas victim should be given a health card mm -hmm. with complete information on his or her health status. Uh, but th that has not happened so far. Meaning mm. that the treatment plan should be clearly laid out. Uh, there should be, you know, and, and the other thing is there is no protocol for treating each kind of it. You know, what is provided is symptomatic treatment. Even till today? Even today. Even today you know. Meaning that I, what was being done on the night of the tragedy uh, is still carrying on being done. Uh, see, earlier what, what used to happen is because there are a number of health facilities, you know, uh, nearly 19 hospitals and clinics. A victim used to go to one hospital one day, take medicine from there. And the next day, the, the same victim would go to another clinic or hospital and take uh, more medicine. So there was no record of what the victim was consuming. So there was uh, many cases over medication. Why and, was this? Uh, why were they seeking over medication? Because they were, they were because the medicines they were getting not curing them. So the hope that. They would find Another hospital would. Yeah, yeah. They were choosing the remedy somewhere. Yeah, so we said this is ridiculous, you know. If there were proper monitoring, this would not have happened, you know. Because uh, you know, they could track, keep records of what treatment was being given to a particular victim. Also, is this uh, uh, necessary? Is this kind of a record necessary in order to ascertain the extent of the injury? Of course, because this record would also prove the degree of injury, you see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, the one positive aspect of uh, starting the process of uh, computerization is that today we have records that 1,70,000 victims have been regularly visiting hospitals for the last 35 years. I mean, this record is there from 2000, you know, the last 19 years. Mm -hmm. And BM, uh, Bhopal Medical uh, the main um, Bhopal Murur Hospital is maintenance records. But we don't know uh, uh, what kind of injuries these 1,70,000 victims are actually repeatedly going to hospitals. Mm -hmm. See? That means they're all permanently injured. Mm -hmm. 
but the bulk of the victims till today are classified as temporarily injured which you know even after 35 years you are temporarily injured you know have all the victims who the government has decided so far are victims mm. got the compensation yeah this this uh, the 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 rupees. no this 470 million most of it was kept in a dollar account so because of uh, in the, in the, in the, during the 12 years, the amount of 705 crores mm -hmm. actually became 3,000 crores mm -hmm. because of a difference in exchange rate. So initially with 1,500 crores, they had dispersed, uh, they had paid compensation to all this 573,000 on the basis of uh, 1 lakh rupees in, in death cases and 25,000 in injury cases. Okay. And the government is actually going to pocket 1,500 crores. Mm -hmm. So then we told the courts that uh, that would be totally unjust. So the court again ordered the pro rata disbursement of the remaining 1,500 crores. So in effect, each gas victim got 50,000 in injury cases and 2 lakhs in death cases. So that is what happened. But in 2010, uh, the government on its own decided to pay 10 lakhs as compensation in death cases, mm -hmm. which was in, uh, at that time they assessed that the, uh, according to them, the official death figure is 5 lakh, uh, 5,295. Right. So each of them got 10 lakhs as compensation. Which is also a gross underestimation of the... Yeah, obviously, because uh, death figures are over 20 to 25,000 at least. You know. About 10 years ago, a little less than 10 years ago, the government of India decided, the Supreme Court also, uh, it appealed to the Supreme Court also that the cleanup operation at the site should also be taken seriously. Can you tell us what is the status of uh, that right now? According to them, about... Um, 350 tons of toxic material is stored within the plant. They said that there are 1.1 million tons of toxic waste. Mm -hmm. In and they, around the in, factory? In, in and around the factory. That's the toxic soil. Uh, this, this, this contaminated water is separate. That's not been right. quantified. That's 1.1 million tons of toxic waste. Uh, toxic soil is there. That has to be uh, cleaned. So this is, uh, uh, it's going to be a long process, you know, and there are technologies which they can remediate the site, on-site remediation is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is called the closed loop uh, technology, mm -hmm. where without further contaminating the environment, they can um, Isolate clean, up the, those parts. Clean, clean up the site. Mm -hmm. So that's possible. But nothing has happened in the last 35 years. It is not, the process has not started at all. So essentially that means that the chemicals still continue to leach into the soil. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, a lot of people staying in and around the factory right. have been drinking contaminated water. For all these years? Uh, because many of them are non, who came into the city after the disaster. So a lot of gas victims plus non-gas victims are victims of contaminated water. Can you give an idea of how densely populated the area around? At the time of the disaster, roughly 9 lakh people were in the city at the time. And subsequently, the, I think it's the population has doubled since then. So we are talking about lakhs of people again getting yeah. further affected. Uh, is there any program run by the government or any agency uh, which informs people of the risks of this? No, we because we've been taking it up. Uh, we've been saying that uh, drinking water should be provided to the people staying in and around the plant. Mm -hmm. So there's a Supreme Court order also that has not been fully executed by the state government. Mm -hmm. So that that's another fight because we're also saying that uh, the people who are affected by contaminated water and toxic waste right. should also be compensation and should also be eligible right. for free medical care. The government recently decided that a certain report which links the um, after effects of the exposure in 1984 with birth defects even in generations today. So 
somehow we hear the news that this report is being suppressed. Now, there have been a lot of suppressions of information uh, in the Bhopal tragedy. First was the um, TIS survey, which you just mentioned. What, what exactly would have happened if the TIS survey had been conducted fully and the government had relied on their finding? The survey carried out by the Tata Institute of Social Sciences right. uh, with the help of various uh, students, from, students and staff from various um, uh, schools of social work, right. roughly about 500 people, okay. had carried out the survey in early uh, 1985. And they had completed a uh, survey in uh, what, uh, 25,000 households. So that is the basic. Unfortunately, that uh, the data was not properly analyzed because the entire uh, data was confiscated by the state government. Even Tata and Trudeau social scientists did not have access to the data. And so, the reason given for that? No, 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 no reason, no reason. They just suppressed that, the, that data. So, till today, a comprehensive survey has not been carried out. So, we do not know the victims, we do not know uh, the deaths, no. uh, we do not know the injuries no. and the extent of the injuries. No. But if we... And not only that, right. the ICMR had started various uh, projects, various uh, to assess the degree of injury, etc. But after 10 years, in 1994, they closed down the entire project. You know, <clears throat> medical research into the effects of, and it was only in 2010, you know, um, because of a continued protest that those research projects were revived, you know. Mm -hmm. So crucial time period in 1994 to 2010, nothing happened, you know. So there is an inadequate research into the actual effects of the exposure. On the exposure. So, which makes the cleanup uh, even more uh, important. Uh, if there was proper uh, medical research into the effects of, uh, of the toxic gases, we would have had good information by them because now it's 35 years and mm -hmm. two, three generations of uh, <coughs> are born and brought up after that. Right. So, right. so we, will, we would have had good information. Right. But from reports, that they're trying to uh, suppress even that uh, information. Of the genetic effects. Genetic effects. And not only that, uh, I mentioned about spurious and over medication, because of which a lot of people have suffering, um, their kidneys have been badly affected. I think. So they were supposed to carry out a proper study of that. That information has also not been made public. Who is supposed to carry out this study? ICMR, ICMR. Basically, other than the free treatment, have the victims and the compensation that they got. Uh, now, what is the, supposed to be the next step for the victims? Will having this health information actually help them if it yes, is done? Of course, of course. <coughs> In what way exactly? Uh, would no, if, if there's a, a, a proper monitoring of, of the histories, they would, would actually know what are the problems that the victim is suffering from, right. see, and what kind of treatment is further required, etc. That information, okay. so pr proper monitoring and uh, and computerization of the health record is very important. So now, what what happens in the next coming days? Do you have pending? No, the other issues of prosecuting the accused, you know, right. you know so that, that matter is also pending for the right. district court, you know, even after. So we have been insisting that the state government set up a special court, try all the accused, mm -hmm. and also try the absconding accused, Union Carbide Corporation, that is uh, in ab absentia, you know, that is also possible, you know, to carry out the mm -hmm. trial. Initially, the CBI had made an attempt to establish what I think has been claimed by many people that the standard which was maintained in the Indian plant and in the US plant were not the same. So, what happened? Daily Science Forum uh, had carried out this uh, study initially, and we came out of this report. We said the cause of the disaster was adoption of double safety standards in the, in the sense that they had. They had a similar plan in the United States, 
where the safety systems were of a different standard. Mm -hmm. so better standard. Yeah, better, of course, better standard. And uh, the, the safety systems in Bhopal were under-designed, meaning that the installed system could not have uh, uh, prevented a disaster. And for example, the scrubber was under-designed. It was never uh, enough to uh, neutralize the amount of toxic materials stored in the plant. Similarly, the, the coolant, the refrigeration system, uh, was also under-designed. So even if those safety systems were in working order, mm -hmm. they could not have prevented the disaster. Whereas in the United States, you have a system that even under the worst case scenario, they will be able to contain the disaster within the plant. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so based on our uh, report, the CBI uh, was forced, said that they would carry out a comparative study. And a CBI team from, went from India to the United States in November 1988. At that time, the U.S. government, Justice Department, said that they have to get permission from the West Virginia, state of West Virginia to allow them to carry out the uh, comparative study. So the, the CBI team, which went to the United States, came back without visiting the Union Carbide plant. But on 14th February 1989, the Justice Department informed the Indian Embassy in, in Washington that permission has been granted to the CBI to visit the plant and carry out the, visit the plant. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the same day on 14th and 15th February, there is a settlement in the Supreme Court, which clearly, it clearly says that the settlement took place in order to prevent the CBI from inspecting the West Virginia plant. It's, it's very clear. Uh, but we but didn't how know, can a uh, settlement be announced but all of a no, sudden? No, no, but this, this information that the permission has been granted may not have been shared with the Supreme Court, you know, and we have not privy to that information at that time. We got at to know this much. At the time of the settlement? No, we got to know this fact much later. So possibly the courts were misled. You see? Mm -hmm. but, but, uh, but, but during the review petition, we pointed this out to the court, you know, we, had, we came to know the information, but the, unfortunately the court refused to accept the contention. But after the criminal cases were revived, mm -hmm. the CBI again said that they would go and carry out that inspection, but after 1991, <laughs> it has never happened. The CBI has actually not, uh, never taken the initiative to go to the U.S. and carry out that. Although the cr criminal cases were revived in October 1991. So what happens next now? What is the next uh, step for the victims of the tragedy? What? No, we, we should, there should be a speedy trial. You know. For the criminal cases? Yes. Yeah, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining Newsly. Thank <laughs> you.